Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you how we go about simplifying algebraic fractions that look something like these. When we have a fraction, it tends to look like A over B, two thirds, three quarters, that kind of thing, okay? But with these ones, you'll notice that they're more complex than just something simple like this. A fraction like this takes up, if you like, two lines, two levels. Whereas in this algebraic fraction, we've got four levels. There's one here, there's one here, and then you've got one on that line and one on that line. And we want to reduce it down to just two levels. In this fraction here, we've got not four levels, but three levels. One here, one here, and one here. So how do we reduce these types of fractions then down to two levels? Well, that's the purpose then of this video. And it's very easy. All we need to do is essentially use a principle that we've used on equivalent fractions. What we do is we say that this fraction here, for instance, is going to be identical to, and we copy the fraction down again, so just write it in like so, and we need to get rid of the fractions that are in the denominators of each of the top and the bottom parts of the fraction. In other words, we need to get rid of this value x here and this value x here. And to do that, we find out what's the lowest common multiple of these two values. And it's just going to be x. So we multiply the top of the fraction by x and we multiply the bottom of the fraction by x. x over x which is essentially 1, because it's the same value. So you're going to multiply this fraction by 1 in the form of x over x. So it's not going to change the value of this, but it will simplify it. Okay, It will change its appearance. And what we get is x multiplied by this first term here, x, which is x squared. And then we get minus 5 over x times this x. Now what happens here is that this x will cancel out with this x and just leave me with minus 5. And then I've got my division line and now we just multiply the bottom of the fraction here, these two terms, with this x. So 2 over x times x here, well that will just give me 2 because those two x's will cancel. So we'll have 2. And then when we come to minus 3 times x, we're just going to get minus 3x. And there you have it. We've got a fraction now that takes up two levels. Now I'll move across to this one here, because in this fraction we've got three levels. And to simplify this, we just put that it's identical to We'll copy that fraction down again. And this time, we just need to get rid of the y. So we'll circle that if you like, not that you have to, but I'm going to now multiply top and bottom of the fraction by y. So in other words, we've got y on that level divided by y on that level y over y is 1, so you're just going to multiply this fraction by essentially 1. So what we get then, and I'll write it here rather than underneath, although I'd generally encourage you to do it underneath, but I haven't got much room in this. So we'll have 3 times y, which is 3y, and then this is all divided by 1 times y, which is y, and now you've got x over y times y, and those two y's would cancel, just leaving you with the x. So you've got y plus x. 3y then, all divided by y plus x. Now when it comes to this example here, let's just border that off from above, okay? When it comes to this example, 
Again, what am I going to do to simplify this? Well, you might even like to pause the video on this one and have a go at simplifying it. So I'll just give you a moment to do that. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Well, again, I'm just going to write this. This is identical to. Copy down the fraction again. And with this one, I need to remove the B, the D, the C and the B squared. So what am I going to need to multiply top and bottom of the fraction by? Well, it might be tempting to think that I've got to multiply it by a B, a D, a C and a B squared. And you could do, but with this example, I notice that I don't have to multiply it with a B and a B squared. B is a factor of B squared, so it's only necessary to multiply by a B squared, a D and a C to remove each one of these parts of the fractions. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by B squared, a C and a D. I can write these in any order I like, it doesn't matter, okay, but I just thought I'd write that in alphabetical order. And we'll divide that again by exactly the same value, B squared, C, D. So that when it comes on to simplifying this, then 1 over B times B squared CD, well that B goes into the B squared B times. So I'm going to be just left with 1 times B CD. And that's just going to give me B CD. And when it comes to minus C over D times B squared CD, well this D will cancel out with the D here, just leaving me with the C here multiplied with the B squared and the C. So I'm going to end up with B squared times C times C. B squared, C squared. And then this will all be divided by, and then we take E over C, multiply it with B squared CD. This time the C will cancel out into the C here, leaving me with B squared D, and I need to multiply it with the E, so I end up with E B squared D. So we'll just write that in, E B squared D. And lastly, for this term here, minus 2 over B squared, I'm going to have a minus, and then the B squared will cancel into this B squared, just leaving me with C D, so I've got 2 times C D, which will be the 2 C D. So hopefully you can see with this one, I only needed to pick B squared because the B went into the B squared. I didn't need to pick B cubed for my value here and here. Okay, so I could leave it like that, but it looks better if I check out if I can factorize the top and the bottom. And I can because on the top I've got common factor of BC. So I'm going to pull BC out as a common factor and that leaves me with just the D minus and then BC here. And all of this is divided by, and in the denominator here I can pull out again a common factor. This time it's D. So I've just got a D bracket and then I'm left with EB squared or I could reverse it round and write it as B squared E to write it in alphabetical order. And then I've pulled out a D, so that just leaves me with minus 2C. And there you go. Now I've got this last one, X all over X plus 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus X over X minus 1. So again, you might like to have a go at trying this. So I'll just give you a moment then to pause the video. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So again, just put that this is identical to, copy down the fraction, 
and this time I need to get rid of the x plus 1 here and the x minus 1 here. They're both different, neither is a factor of the other, so I need to multiply top and bottom of the fraction with x plus 1 times x minus 1. So we've got x plus 1 multiplied with x minus 1. And this is all divided then by the same value again, x plus 1 times x minus 1. So what do I get? Well, when it comes to multiplying this term with x plus 1, x minus 1, the x plus 1 cancels out, leaving me with x times x minus 1. So I'll write x times x minus 1 for that. And then we've got plus 1 now times x plus 1, x minus 1. So that's just going to be x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 1. And then all of this is divided by, and then we've got the 1 multiplied with the x plus 1, x minus 1. So that's just going to be, again, x plus 1 times x minus 1. And lastly, for this term here, we're going to have plus, and then I notice that this x minus 1 here would cancel out with the x minus 1 here, just leaving me with x times x plus 1. So it would have x times x plus 1. Now to simplify this further, I could expand the brackets if I wanted to, but I'm not. I notice that x minus 1, for instance, is a common factor in this term here, and it's a common factor in this term here. So I'm going to pull out x minus 1. Just saves me having to expand the brackets. And then what have I got left? Well, I'm going to put a square bracket there. So for this term, it's just going to be multiplied with the x. And for this term, I've pulled out x minus 1, so I'm just left with plus x plus 1. And I'll close that square bracket. And this is all divided by, and for the denominator here, again, I'm not going to expand the brackets. I'm going to notice that I've got a common factor here of x plus 1. So I'm going to pull x plus 1 out the front of a square bracket. And in here, we're going to have x minus 1. And then for this last term, I've pulled out x plus 1, so I'm just left with plus x. And I can simplify this further. I've got x minus 1 on the top. And inside this square bracket, I've got x plus another x, which is 2x. And then I've got plus 1. And then that's all divided by the x plus 1 here. And I've got x plus x, which is 2x. And then I've got minus 1. So if you did expand top and bottom, you'd have got quadratic expressions, which would then have factorized to these anyway. So it's up to you which method you take, but I do prefer this one. OK, well, I hope that's given you some idea then how we go about simplifying what I call stacked fractions.